Um, hi, everybody. I'm Rob McCurdy. I'm a faculty member at CU Boulder. And um, I would like to give you some of my ruminations and opinions on the combination of robotics, computational design, and computational fabrication. And I'm going to end with, uh, I have only three slides. I'm going to end with a slide with a lot of questions for you. So um, maybe that will spark some discussion. Um, so I first wanted to talk about some standard uh, robot structures and uh, kind of remind you of what these things look like. So I think we've all seen robot arms that look like this. And this is one of the versions of Atlas and a sort of canonical robot hand. And um, standard practice is to posit a design. And that design intuition or inspiration comes from somewhere. Um, often that's a bio-inspired design. We have arms, we have hands, we have legs. Um, it's not surprising that many of our robots wind up looking kind of like we do. Um, and then there's a second phase of the design process, and that phase is to design some controller. So we posit a morphology, and then we design a controller that optimizes that morphology for some or some number of tasks. And um, I will observe that uh, there are many robots in the world, many of which that look topologically identical to each other. So we have legged robots and anthropomorphic robots of many types. We have robot hands that have amazing variety and, and beautiful mechanical design, but also still they are basically the same topology. So computational design provides an opportunity for us to move away from that, uh, that paradigm a bit. Um, there are a couple of recent results that I, I want to just highlight, if not necessarily advertise, because there are many really excellent results, so it's always risky to pick a few. But this is one recent example of co-designing the robot morphology and the controller. And so the user is exposed to um, basically just defining what they want the robot's trajectory to be in this case. So you pick a point of knot points, uh, a collection of knot points, and then say, I want to move some end effector through this trajectory subject to a bunch of constraints, collision constraints, et cetera. And then you provide to the designer a family of robot primitives. And the automated designer synthesizes the robot morphology and the robot controller in a co-design process to, at the end of the day, give you some potential set of candidate designs whoops, that uh, will satisfy that. Um, we also have seen uh, several examples of robots that are, in this case, simulation only, uh, that are continuous. So they're composed of several different materials. Those materials can be distributed throughout space. And then optimization techniques are used to place those different materials uh, into their potential locations in order to realize some or one or more design objectives. Uh, so in each of these cases, we have these multi-material soft deformable structures which can do something. And then finally, some of the new fabrication approaches that we have um, provide the opportunity to, to create some structures that would have been intractable to fabricate just a few years ago. So there's some examples of multi-material inflatable structures um, this is a, uh, what looks like a canonical cast in place um, a soft finger, but was actually fabricated using an extrusion-based process. And then this is a, a four-legged robot uh, composed of several different materials, pneumatically actuated, fabricated using drop-on-demand inkjet printing. So uh, what I'm hinting at is that this, we can move beyond, as roboticists move beyond the standard practice of positing morphology and then optimizing that particular morphology and instead co-designing those two things. So we can co-design the morphology and the controller. And I think that that, at least for me and hopefully for, for the roboticists, leads to a couple of questions. So um, if you have single objective design, there are, are many families of, of optimization tools which allow us to kind of choose the best design in a truly optimal way. But instead, if you have a multi-objective uh, set of uh, things that you care about, now you're in a Pareto optimality uh, design optimization sense. And so how do you choose what the best design is? What kinds of tools do we need to develop in order to help us uh, understand the complexity of designs that are possible using multiple objectives and many different materials that can be placed anywhere? Um, what, do we, what do we know or what can we say about how this new reality of co-designing morphologies and controllers uh, can say about the reachability or controllability of any particular robot. Again, if you have a fixed morphology, we know a lot about 
analyzing what the reachability or controllability of that system might be. But if you don't know anything about the morphology a priori, what can we say, if, if anything, uh, about what the, uh, what the reachability and controllability of those structures might be? Um, yeah, how do we find designs? How do we search through this vast haystack uh, with many potential needles, and how we choose the needle which potentially is the best for any particular set of objectives? Um, and I guess finally I'll close with asking the question, so if we have the ability to make a robot which is dedicated or devoted or designed for one particular task and one robot per task, is that better in some sense than making a general purpose robot that might have two arms and two legs and might be suboptimal for every task but might do reasonably well? So obviously there are a bunch of other fabrication questions that go along with that, but um, I think there's some, there are some opportunities here for creating special purpose robots. Oh, one more thing. So, right. So, will, will these robots actually find an application? Will people care? Um, so, I thought I would, uh, I would ask you a bunch of questions and the ellipsis is to inspire hopefully more. So, that's the, the end of my opening and it's my pleasure to introduce Rob Shepard who is a faculty member at uh, Cornell University in mechanical engineering. Uh, Rob's a roboticist and a chemist and so um, I kind of think about him as making better robots through chemistry. So.